أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان على النبي من حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقدورا الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخ شونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على رسول الله 
عليه الأطهار على رسول الله وآله الأطهار صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Dear Ayah Ustad, Sheikh, Shumali, Elders, Brothers and Sisters, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. It seems like everyone wants to be a follower. So we see a massive crowd, inshallah. And hopefully we will be a follower for the whole six weeks ahead, inshallah. Uh, on that note, I would like to first of all say thank you very much to our great teacher that for this sixth semester he has accepted our invitation, came up with an amazing idea for this semester and I would really say thank you very much for accepting to teach us and guide us. And can we have a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad for our shaykh. There are many, many faces which we can recognize and we say to students who have been with us for many semesters, heartiest welcome back. For those who are completely new and I see many faces, it is amazing to have you joining us in Hujat Academy. I'm going to take a bit of a few moments just to explain because it's the very first time. I don't think in a in a gathering when it comes to formal teaching, Islamic formal teaching, with desks and chairs and classroom environment inside an Islamic center like this, it may be is quite new for you. For some of us, this is standard every Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday, but this is how we do it. And Alhamdulillah, the interest has been picking up massively. And it just shows that even in 2019, there is a great demand and yearn to learn knowledge and deeper knowledge from true scholars like we have here. You will see that this semester, though, is going to be slightly different from before. We're going to have talk from our teacher. We're going to then, thereafter, instead of having two hours of speech on two different topics, there is going to instead be a link continuously where there is one topic with many sub subjects every week. This very first week the talk is going to be slightly longer to approximately nine o'clock and then we are going to have a Q&A regarding the talk. Thereafter, approximately at 10 past 9, we're going to have Tabarruk. Important that everyone stands up then. Ladies, go towards the ladies' side, which is you enter from there. And the gents towards the back. We're going to approximately, during that Q&A time, we're going to set up uh, which groups everyone is going to be in. So this is different. So we're going to divide people into groups so that we can facilitate discussions. This is going to be slightly more interactive than before because otherwise we only have a talk and then after that we have Q&A. But this time around there's going to be a bit of pondering, thinking and then thereafter some discussion and ideas from different groups. If you've been put into a group which you don't like, remember as a follower, that's not such thing that a group which you don't like, inshallah, that's part of the imtihan. Okay. Uh, I know that many, many of you have questions regarding assessments, regarding I didn't do the assessment and I want more time, as well as what about if I want to do but I'm not sure. We're going to touch on that later inshallah. Now without further ado, let's start this new semester and I want to really say thank you very much to brother Imran Ali for that eloquent recitation. May Allah give you more tawfiq and for us to have the opportunity to listen to you more inshallah. 
Now, let's welcome our Sheikh with this and, and start this uh, new semester with the best of ways, which is Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الهدي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره وشيعته اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم First I should humbly thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us this توفيق to continue our studies in Hujjat Academy and in particular to start our sixth semester and it's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should be very grateful. I'm also grateful to you for showing interest uh, this is very encouraging, so in addition, inshallah, to the reward that you take for your interest in learning, inshallah, you will get additional reward for setting up a good example. And whoever would be impressed by this example and follow this example, you would, inshallah, get reward. And I should also thank uh, all the brothers and sisters who run Hujjat Academy and do lots of work for preparation, for registration, volunteers. So may Allah, inshallah, bless them all. This uh, semester, as you know, we talk about followership or true followership. And I think this is one of the most needed topics Actually, for us, this is the core of being a Shia, because Shia mean, means follower. We are Shia not just because we have certain doctrines or certain practices. We are Shia because we are determined to follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in everything that he taught Muslim Ummah and in particular in what he defined as the path after himself. So we follow him in everything. In particular, we follow him in following Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Because the Prophet asked us that we should refer to him. Uh, in my book on Shi Islam, I have brought some quotations from some uh, early uh, uh, scholars of Milal and Nihal, those who study sects, 
and they say that the Shia are the people who believe in Imam of Ali because of declaration and announcement which was made by the Prophet. And this is very accurate. So we are Shia to Nabi and Shia to Ali. And therefore, in some hadith, we have uh, the Prophet using the expression Shia to Na, our Shia. So for us to follow the Prophet, and then based on his instruction, which comes, of course, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow Imam Ali and other Imams, is very much a sense of our identity. We have to be good followers. And this shows that faith is dynamic. If faith was static, there was no need to emphasize on following. You have to be something. But because faith is dynamic, it's a matter of every day, every moment, you have to make decisions. You have to form relations or stop relations. You have to plan. You are all the time in action. So to be follower, it's very important for this type of understanding of faith. If it was just to believe in certain things and practice certain things, you didn't need to that much focus on following. You remember we talked about the concept of knowing a mom of your time in the last semester. And I explained that why it is important that we know Imam of our time. And what does that involve? It's not just to know him by name or by, for example, certain biographical information. You have to know Imam of your age in the way that can save you from Jahiliya. It means that it has lots of practical implications. I don't want to repeat that discussion. We discussed this last semester. So because faith is dynamic, because we are all the time moving and going forward, we need to be good followers. Otherwise, we would miss lots of instructions, lots of signals. So this is one point. Another point is that we are in the time of ghaybah. What we said so far applies to all the Shia in all ages. But the second point is about the Shia in the time of ghaybah. In this time, if we are good followers, not only we can be loyal to our faith, but we can also prepare for coming of our Imam, for the Shia of this time to be good followers is a key or maybe the most important thing for coming of Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. My understanding is and I am sure you would also agree with me that we are not waiting for Imam in the sense that Imam needs time to prepare. Imam is waiting for us because we are not prepared. If we are prepared, I don't think even it would take one day that Imam alayhi salam would come. What has kept Imam in ghaybah is that we are not prepared to fulfill our responsibilities. He is the real muntazir. The true muntazir is Imam himself. We think or claim that we are waiting. 
if you were really and I was really waiting, we couldn't have comfortable life. You know, when you are waiting for someone, for example, to come and, for example, you know, your child coming back from a school is one hour late. How do you feel? If he doesn't come over the night, you cannot even sleep. Our Imam is not there for centuries and we have normal life. So we are not waiting really. We are enjoying our own life and just we say how good it could be if we had also Imam with us. Just as you know and something which is like a bonus. Not really something that we are waiting, something that we feel is missing. So we are not true Muntazir, I am talking about myself. Those who are true Muntazir, they cannot have uh, any happy day or night. They are all the time praying, working hard, crying. So, in this time that either we are waiting or more accurately, Imam is waiting for us. What is very much needed is that we should prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our readiness to welcome Him. Our readiness to help Him. Our readiness to be good aids and followers for him. Allah is not going to accept our call for coming of Imam if he doesn't see that we are sincere. The time of people welcoming Imam Hussein, for example, and not keeping their promises has gone. The time of people not appreciating Imam Ali or Imam Hassan, that time has gone. This is the time that people should demonstrate that they are ready. Because he is the last one remaining. He is Baqiyatullah. So he is not only a godly figure, but he is also the remaining, the only last hujjah of Allah remaining. And Allah is not going to send him unless he sees in us full commitment. One of uh, ulama has a good example. He says, imagine uh, you are in charge of, for example, city council and there is a street that whenever you put lights the people of that street break and destroy the light and then they call you and say you know we don't have light here it's dark can you give us another light so you keep changing the lights and give them new light but they are still destroyed and you have only one light left what do you do then you don't put that light anymore unless you are 100% sure that this one is going to be appreciated and preserved. So we have to demonstrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are ready for that. We are going to be grateful. We are going to be appreciative. And we are going to be suiting him you know if you just wait for a guest you have to show that you are prepared for that guest to receive him look after him but if you are waiting for someone not just as a guest someone who has a mission then you have to not only show that you appreciate you have to show that you can help him for example if we have an ep epidemic disease and no doctor locally has been able to solve the problem 
We have tried all of them. Now, we want to invite the best doctor of the world to come and help us. So, can we just wait for him? And when he comes, we protect him? Or, we have to prepare for his functioning. He needs maybe hospital, maybe he needs some nurses, maybe he needs some beds, some medicine. You cannot just wait for him to come and he sa comes and he says, we have nothing prepared. He cannot do surgery on this road. Or he cannot help people with those who themselves are ill <laughs> and have problems. Or if you want to educate people and you are inviting the best teacher of the world, you have to also prepare by yourself making classrooms, desks, I don't know, some library, you yourself learn something so that you can help him. He cannot do everything single-handedly. So, if we are really waiting for Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, we have to prepare ourselves. In Ziyarat Jami'ah, we say, وَنُصْرَتِي لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ My help for you is prepared, is ready. I know what skills you need. I know what resources you need. What type of characteristics you need. We have made sure that all of them are ready. Just we need you to take us one level further. The third point. This is very important point for guidance and spirituality. Whenever you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something for your guidance, for your spirituality, you need to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have utilized what is available. I cannot ask Allah for more when I have not utilized what he has already given me. For example, very simple example, suppose Allah has given me enough money to feed my family today. I cannot save this money and don't feed them today and say, oh Allah, give me enough to feed them for one year. Allah says, okay, use this and feed them today. Then, when I see you have no money, I will give you. When I see you have utilized it, I will give you more. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And shukr means, not only to say verbally thank you, but to utilize what ni'mah you have been given. So, Whenever you want something more, appreciate what you have. This is the key. If you want something more, appreciate what you have. If you want a better house, appreciate this house that you have. If you complain about this house, you will not be given a better house. And if you are by chance given, that would not be a ni'mah for you. That can be a ni'mah for you. If God forbids we are not grateful and still we are given more, then this is istidraj. This is not ni'mah. So, anything that you want more, 
or higher, appreciate what you have. When it comes to guidance, many times we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, Oh Allah, please show me a very godly scholar, a very godly teacher, someone like Ayatollah Qazi Tabatabai, someone like Ayatollah Bahjat, someone like Allah Tabatabai, so that I can come to you very fast. But most of the time this doesn't happen. The key is this. If you can show to Allah that you have used and utilized the best available in the best possible way, then he makes more available. So this is the formula. Remember this formula. If you make use of the best available guidance, the best available teacher, the best available spiritual gift, in the best possible way, then Allah would give you more. If we live even in a village and we have a pious imam of masjid maybe his knowledge is not that much he's a pious just imam of a local masjid in a village if we appreciate him through him we can get what allah gives the people who live with a great teacher because what is important is not the means. What is important is who has this means in his hand. Any pious guide is in hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through him you can get. Or for example if there is a shrine near you. And you appreciate that shrine. Through that shrine you can get what you can get from Medina, what you can get from Karbala. When people went to see Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, <laughs> and they were close to Hazrat Abdul Azim, Imam alayhi salam said that visiting him is like visiting Imam Hussein. Not because he is equal to Imam Hussein, no. Because these places are all from behind connected. You see them scattered, but this is physically. Spiritually, they are all connected. And they are all different rooms of the house of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the lectures on light, uh, when I explained the ayah, fi buyutin adhinallah an turfa'a ma yudhkara fi hasmuh, I have explained this in details that the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world is distributed through houses fi buyutin after allah nur as samawati wal ars then allah gives us the address fi buyutin adhinallahu an turfa'a wa yudhkara fi hasmuh these buyu these houses are buyutul anbiya these are the houses of the prophets and in islam we have only one house that's the house of the Prophet. And Ahlul Bayt are Ahlul Bayt and Nabi. These are household of the house of the Prophet. So whoever is counted as Ahlul Bayt, 
entrance to his house is entrance to the house of the Prophet. When you go to Mashhad and you seek permission, you say, Allahumma inni waqaftu ala babin min abwaab buyut nabiyyik. You are in Mashhad, but you say, I am standing next to one of the gates of the house of your Prophet. وَقَدْ مَنَعْتَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ And you have prohibited people to enter the house of the Prophet without seeking permission. So, these houses look different, look scattered for us, but they are all connected. Indeed, first, you see, for example, Imam Raza, but all Ahlul Bayt are there. The Prophet is there. And even from behind, Ibrahim and Musa and Isa and Nuh are all there. Because all these houses are connected also. So first, all the houses in Islam are connected to the Prophet. And then all the Prophets are connected to each other, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no separation. It's important that me and you appreciate what is available to us. In this age of ghaybah, we need to show our appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every blessing that he has given us, especially in the teachings that we have received i don't know have you ever really thought how much allah has blessed us by receiving so many teachings of prophet and imams through our ulama if we didn't have this, what would be our situation today? Are we all together able to thank Allah just for Sahifiyya Sajjadiyya? If all our life, all of us thank Allah for Sahifiyya Sajjadiyya, we cannot thank Him. If you all thank Him for Nahjul Balagh, we cannot thank Him. If we want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for thousands of hadith from Imam Baqir, from Imam Sadiq, we cannot thank him. And we cannot thank our ulama who worked very, very hard to preserve all these for us. As you remember, we said before, even today we can go back generation by generation and trace back all these hadith up to the time of Ma'soom. The first narrator, the second narrator, the third narrator. Is he known? Is he not known? Is he reliable or not? We have to show appreciation. If me and you show appreciation to what we have received from Prophet and Imam Sadiq and Imam Zainul Abidin and Amirul Mu'mineen in these books, then we can ask Allah, can I be there to listen to Imam Mahdi? But if I don't appreciate what is available, then why you want to hear Imam Mahdi? You are not grateful for what you have been given. If I am showing gratitude to our ulama, who are students of our imams, then I can say, now I want to meet their teacher. If I show my gratitude to our maraj, then I can say, okay, now I want to go one level further. But when 
I am not even showing appreciation to our marja or maraj. What's the point of asking for more? Do you want just to add to your responsibility, to your burden? You have been given something great and you don't appreciate, then you want something more? So, remember that formula, that equation. If we make the best use of what is available, then Allah will give more, make more available. This is very important for anyone who is waiting for Imam Mahdi Sharif. I believe, and I think this is understandable from the Quran, when Allah says, "Alladina jahadu fina la nahdiyannahum subulana," those who struggle in our way, we will certainly show them, guide them our ways. So, if we really benefit from what is available in the books, in the teachings of ulama, through marajah. And we reach the point that we need more. Imam himself guides you. If you are a good head teacher, if you are a good head of a Jose, for example, and you see there is a student that has benefited from the teachers, from the books, worked hard, and none of the teachers locally is able to help him anymore. He has lots of interest, talents, but no teacher locally is able to help him. What do you do? If you yourself can teach him, you would do it. Otherwise, you are restless till you connect him to someone who is better. It is impossible that a Shia in any part of the world, east or west, has utilized whatever was available and then he is left abandoned. It's impossible. No good teacher, no good trainer would do this. Our Imam is hardy. His main function is guidance. It's impossible. He doesn't help people with guidance. We ask him for bread. We ask him for, I don't know, money, for a house. He still helps. How can he fail to help someone who asks for guidance while his main job is guidance? You know, for example, I ask an alim, please help me. I look for a house. Please help me, you know, uh, for a job. Please help me with, you know, getting a loan. He is kind and he helps me. If he has any advice, he has any contacts, he helps me. But his main job is not these things. <laughs> his main job is to teach. Imam Mahdi's main job is not to help us with our worldly needs. Of course, he does this, but it's not his main job. His main job is what? To help you with your spirituality. To help you with your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his obligation. This is his function. This is his task. The only condition is you should be really asking for that. In a spirituality, we cannot give it by force. Because this is not something that <laughs> accepts force. I cannot show someone how to be a loving person by forcing him. Knowledge in the beginning, like for example, how to read, I don't know, a text, how to learn, for example, basic mathematics or physics, maybe by force, by beating, can happen. But never by force you can make a scientist. You can never by force make a mujtahid. Because after a certain level, it's only a matter of love and passion and interest. Maybe we can force someone to say prayer. 
But we cannot force him to be harsher in his prayer. This is what the person has to work for it and try to achieve. So if we want to be given the honor and blessing of being in direct communication with Imam Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajo Sharif, not in the sense that you necessarily meet him. No, in the sense that you receive guidance from him. Meeting him is not the main thing. The main thing is to receive guidance. The main thing is that he accepts you and looks after your uh, spirituality. The key is to show appreciation to what is available. The best which is available. Use it and then inshallah you will be given more. So, for us, this issue of followership is very, very important for different reasons that we have mentioned. If we can show that we are good followers for the leaders that we have, for the teachings that we have received, then inshallah Allah would honor us to be follower of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif also in the time of Zuhur, in the time of his public functioning. He is not absent, he's present, but he is not publicly functioning right now. And time of Zuhur is when he is publicly functioning. I would like to mention some hadith and then inshallah we would have a question answer these hadith that I have selected for you are about the way Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam have expressed their expectations from Shia for example, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Shi'atuna ahlul wara'i wal ijtihad. Our Shia are those who have wara'a. Wara'a is a high level of taqwa. Wara means you don't take any risk with wajib and haram. Not only you do wajibat, not only you avoid haram, but even if something is problematic, you try to be precocious, to be doing ihtiyat. So if something is shubh, if something is problematic, to be haram, you avoid it. Or if it is something that might be wajib, but you are not sure, you try to do it. Maybe some ulama said it is wajib. Some ulama said it is mustahab. You try to do it. Because you don't want to take any risk. This is the meaning of vara. Awra'un nas man waqafa in the shubuhat. Okay? So Imam Sadiq says, Shi'atuna ahlul wara'i wal ijtihad. Ijtihad means hard work. Mujtahid literally means the one who does his best. So Shia are not lazy people. Shia are hard working people. Wa ahlul wafa'i wal aman. They are people of loyalty. They are people of trustworthiness. They are those who have no interest in materialistic life. They keep 
minimum engagement with dunya. They do more with abad. Because either you have to spend your time and energy on gaining from dunya, or you keep dunya as much as needed, and spend the rest in doing abad and charity and good work. Ashabu ihda wa khamsin raka'atan fil yawm wa layla. Our Shia are those who do 71 raka'ah in 24 hours. Means 17 wajibah, 34 nawafir. How many Shia are there in London? Al qa'imuna bil layl. They do tahajjud. As-sa'imuna bin nahar They fast during the day. Of course, not maybe every day, but at least some of the days they should fast. Yuzakuna amwalahum They purify their money. They give their wajibat, financial, you know, like homes, zakat, and this thing. And maybe even mustahabbat. وَيَحُجُّونَ bayt. They do hajj of the house of Allah. وَيَجْتَنِبُونَ كُلَّ muharram, And they avoid anything which is prohibited. Another hadith is from Imam Baqir alayhi salam. ما شيعتنا إلا من اتقى الله وأطاعه. It's not our Shia except those who have piety and obey God. Those who fear God and obey God. وما كانوا يعرفون. Our Shia were not known. إلا بِالتَّوَاضُعِ وَالتَّخَشُّعِ وَأَدَاءِ الْأَمَانَةِ وَكَثْرَةِ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Imam Baghir says, our Shia in the past were known in the time of Prophet Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein the Shia were always known through these characteristics humbleness, tawadu تَخَشُّعِ Takhashu is internal humility. Khushu, when we are talking about akhlaq, we said tawazu is more seen externally and khushu is more experienced internally. So tawazu with people and khushu with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivery of the trust and frequent abundant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one more hadith this is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna shi'atana man shayyana. Our Shia are truly those who follow us. As I said at the beginning, we are Shia of the Prophet and Imams. But to be Shia means to follow them. قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ If you love Allah, follow me, then Allah will love you. We have to follow the Prophet. So our Shia are those who follow us. وَاتَّبَعَ آثَارَنَا They follow our teachings or our footprints our 
signs if in personal life family life social life business in anything if they have showed us a particular way of dealing with people we should follow that and they have taken example from our actions our actions has become have become for them their role models and examples so as you see the first and the most important characteristic of a shia of a good follower is taqwa obedience to make sure that we perform our wajibat to make sure that we don't do any haram to take no risk with our faith and then to follow the example of the prophet and ahlul bayt in our character inshallah from next session <coughs> we will talk about some characteristics that are very important for a true follower there are about 22 follow, uh, characteristics that i have selected and inshallah we will discuss them i don't know how much time we will get but inshallah we will see but because this is something that needs also your input so we would spend good uh, amount of time every session also on discussion so inshallah after break then uh, uh, we would have discussion and i will tell you at the beginning of discussion what would be the topic that inshallah you should discuss we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us grateful for every blessing that we have received and for every blessing that he has given to any person we don't thank him only for those things that have come to us we thank him for every blessing that he has given to any person and in particular we thank him for the gift of guidance that we have received and we request him to make us grateful for having imam of our time with us and being connected to him through the sacred institutions of marja'iyya and a scholarship and we hope that inshallah day by day as community and as individuals we move forward in this bright path inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin We will open up for questions and answers, inshallah, for approximately seven, eight minutes. We'll start with the ladies. Any questions, please, Bismillah. If you raise your arm and we will come with the mic. On the gen side, any questions? That means one of three things, either everything is crystal clear, number two, the people are shy, or number three, lots of questions towards the end. I'm coming on the gen side. Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Asalaamu Alaikum. You mentioned that uh, a very interesting thing, which is that faith is dynamic. Yeah. Could you give us some examples of what you meant by that? Thank you. It means that you are always in need of new decisions, new choices. You cannot retire. You cannot say i go to autopilot mode <laughs> and just you know 
enjoy myself, everything will go normal. Every moment we have to be alert. Even when you may not expect some of the major decisions may come. For example, sometimes you think when you go home, there is nothing to worry about. Not knowing that maybe today in home there is big test for you. You come to masjid and say, Alhamdulillah, this is the time I want to relax, you know, and pray to Allah. The big test comes there. You can never, you know, say, my test is here or there, or the answer is this or that. You have to be 360 degree alert. The test, the opportunities also. Uh, you may remember, or some of you, might uh, remember uh, because some are new that I said Prophet Musa Allah Nabi wa Ali wa alayhi salam when was taking his family in dark night yeah he was very concerned about their safety but he saw a fire on the side, not in front. Why I say it was on the side? Because the Quran says he told his family to wait, I go and check. If it was on the, in front of them, they would have all gone and reached. He said, this fire, I go and check. If it is something good, I will bring it for you. Maybe I bring some of this fire. He then had the best of experiences of his life till that time. He became a prophet. If he was not alert, if he was sleepy or just looking in front of him, he would have missed that opportunity. So you have to be always careful. Always look around. There can be a danger. There can be an opportunity. Especially in this age. A speed is also very high. You know, some games initially the low speed, then they make it faster and faster. We are <laughs> mu'minin that have joined this race of hack and battle when it is very fast. <laughs> In the past, maybe every century had one major incident. Now, every few years, the world is changing so fast. What we have seen in our generation, no generation maybe has seen so much of changes. So, we have to be very alert, very careful, and we need to also act, inshallah, as I will explain later, as a team. Because when you need lots of you know, things to check, then you cannot check it alone. We have to be as a team, inshallah. We will take one more question because that was a super question and an amazing answer. Any more questions, ladies' side? Yes, Asa. Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. So, this alertness and dynamism. It's not equitable across everybody because somebody would have the hikmah and somebody would be finding it difficult for that hikmah. Yeah. How do you achieve? Is it earned or is it given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hikmah? Yeah. Hikmah is a gift, but Allah gives his gifts for good reason. You know, if someone is always using 
figures up to 100, we don't give him a cal you know, calculator because he doesn't need more than 100. <laughs> we give gift to people. Someone doesn't know Arabic. We don't give him an Arabic text as a gift. Yeah? So, hikmah is a gift, but Allah gives this gift to people that qualify for it. Uh, I have uh, two series on hikmah, one given the Shrine of Lady Masum, one in London, and I have explained what qualifications we need to get gift of hikmah. But if we don't have that gift of hikmah, at least we should connect ourselves to those who have hikmah. We don't need to all be wise. <laughs> yeah? But if there is Luqmanul Hakim there, we should be humble and go and ask him for hikmah. We shouldn't say to Allah, oh Allah, give me hikmah to me directly. Because actually one of the major qualities that you need for hikmah is humbleness. If you really love hikmah, you should show your appreciation of the hikmah that other people have to share. So this is again where we as a community can be much better. Because in community as a whole, we may have wise people and some wisdom that we can benefit. Similarly, for example, children. If children, they don't have that much of wisdom that, for example, maybe their parents or grandparents have, they should benefit from that wisdom. They shouldn't say, I don't need you know, wisdom. I know myself everything. Humility is a great uh, characteristic that if we have, lots of doors will be open to us. If we don't have humility, we close ourselves all the doors. Can we have a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad? Can, uh, can I say the question for discussion now? Yeah? Okay. Inshallah, uh, after break, we are going to have group uh, discussion. And as uh, Brother Arif said, uh, it would be better if people of the same group remain together for these six weeks so that you know each other and then, inshallah, we would have a project also for you. For tonight, there is a question. Okay? There is a question which is uh, helping us also for the rest of our discussion. In your estimation, in your estimation, what are top five good characteristics that you think Shia community in London have and five negative characteristics or shortcomings that you think we have to be considered as good followers. So five positive and five negative. So each group would discuss and then at the end, one of them would present what are their, you know, ideas. Ah, Santo. Thank you very much. So, if I may ask for everyone's attention, I'm going to go through a few announcements. These are very important ones. First, regarding assessments. I want to, and the team, and on behalf of Shay, we want to thank everyone who have done the assessments. I have to say that the number of people who have really gone and sat down and done the assessment online or even on paper is a much greater number than I had expected or we had expected. So that's a great one. I won't tell you the number yet. <laughs> 
those who haven't done, some of them said, I'm in crisis mode, I really want to do it. We will give you an extension of one week, inshallah. So one more week, inshallah, do it. And I just wanted to repeat one point, that people who, students who do the assessments, and have done the assessments through the semesters, will be receiving a certificate, as we said, that you've gone through a really a worthy program. So please do them. We have been receiving few questions, not many, but few, where the quote is, I don't understand the question. Can you guide me a bit? Can you help me? And the answer is, of course we can. So please, if you have any hesitation on any question, just ask, and inshallah, we will help you, inshallah. Uh, our exams are very, very easy. <coughs> Those who didn't have a clue about the assessments, and now you want to do, and you want to earn a certificate, this is uh, a school where doors are open, so please do contact us for that as well. Now, regarding uh, divisions and group for discussion, I will ask the AV room to please put up the list. Whilst that being done, um, we will be going for Tabarro. You will see the names here, and you're going to see that we're going to flick between names and locality, where the groups are going to be. So please remember your group. Ladies are not mixed with gents. So sisters, please you look at your group number. Gents, you look at your group number. As well as, if I have everyone's attention. It's very interesting <laughs> that whenever names come up, it's very similar to when we teach children. We all become excited. <laughs> so see the names. Remember which group you're in and where you are. If anyone has a problem with the group, uh, you can go to Sheikh and ask him. <laughs> okay. A few more, please. Okay, please just silently look at your names and then remember. Now, very, very important. When you go and collect your tabaru, directly go with your tabaru to the place where you are supposed to be. So you are allowed to munch and speak and come to good discussion. I don't know if that is thawab or not or it's bad, but this time around we are allowed to. <laughs> okay. There are some students who have come and they haven't registered. And you may not see your names or that you've registered slightly late and we have put up the names before we quote your names. <coughs> Please choose a group today and then let us know, tell us before you exit, which group were you in, inshallah, okay? Then the last thing, sign in. Many of you haven't signed in. There are two places to sign in. One is at the Jens Treasures desk over there, Brother Ashik sits. And as well at the back over there, where Tahira Bai and Sister Fatima is also at the back, please. Sign in, very, very important. This is wajib. Mm -hmm. The other thing, regardless if the best team, it's called Liverpool, <laughs> plays in Champions League, you still have to attend. <laughs> On that night, we will see who is attending and who is a real follower. <laughs> and last but not the least, Really sorry, sorry, if we have shortage in Tabaruk today, because we got an influx towards the end of many more students. So why not share the kebab? <laughs> okay? And l last, last thing as well, uh, those who felt a bit uncomfortable where you didn't get a seat, and we, that's the same reason we had an influx of people who wanted to be followers on the last day. Awesome. Thank you very much. Now, please, if you remember your names, 
and the groups. When do it should be back? And we will, oh, when will we be back? Sharp at 9.40. 9.40. You should be back with the five positives and the five negatives. Papers will be going through. Facilitators will come to you. Asa, thank you.